Thank you, Kyle. I'm going to share a few closing remarks before we head into our next session. I really want to thank Kyle for his leadership. He's truly an inspiration to all of us. Really the force behind the transformation that this organization has taken over the last several years. Kyle, thank you again for your leadership. We are going to miss your, your enthusiasm and your, your boldness, if I will. Lots of thanks have been spread around the room today. I um, want to emphasize our thanks to Mara Tekach um, for her leadership and, and true friendship that she has established in a very short amount of time. Alma, Diane, the rest of our, our colleagues at the State Department, we really couldn't do any of this without your leadership and, and again, friendship. I want to also thank our supporters of this meeting. In addition to the Department of State, many of the NPA organizations and others have stepped forward to help really sort of amplify and make this meeting incredibly special. A, a special shout out to the International Institute of Wisconsin, Al Dirtka, for hosting this breakfast this morning. Thank you, Al. <laughs> Most importantly for me, I want to thank the Global Ties US team. Wow, you guys have really made us all proud. Um, it has been a very complicated meeting to put together with a new venue. Uh, very high profile event yesterday and last evening and um, with the leadership of Jason Terry I'm just so proud of you guys. Um, so can you if you're in the room? Can you please stand and be recognized? Oh my goodness, they're all there he is <laughs> So no question about it 2015 is going to be an amazing year an incredibly important year for all of us in this room but I do also want to mention that in addition to the IVLP, there are a number of organizations in this room that are going to be celebrating milestone anniversaries. Citizen Diplomacy International of Philadelphia will be celebrating its 60th anniversary. Global Ties Alabama will be celebrating its 50th anniversary. Last year, the Minnesota International Center celebrated its 60th anniversary. And I know there are others in this room that are going to be celebrating whether it's 25 years, 30 years, 60 years um, of hard work and commitment to this program. So if you would, if I didn't announce you, if you would stand up and be recognized um, for the great work that you've done for decades. <laughs> Congratulations and ha happy anniversary. So I estimate that collectively we have over 3,000 years of experience strengthening relations between individuals and nations. Now that is amazing, 3,000 years. As the theme of this meeting suggests, today's diplomacy does require new skills and approaches. The dynamics, there's no doubt about it, are moving so rapidly, but the expectation is that we need to react with lightning speed using the most advanced tools at our disposal. At the same time, we need to stay true to public diplomacy's fundamental principle, which is that it requires a commitment to long-term sustained engagement, which takes a tremendous amount of patience. So how do we reconcile this paradox? How do we deliver rapid and innovative responses to global challenges at the same time, demonstrating a slow and sustained commitment to regional, key regions of the world? So this situation calls to mind one of my favorite stories, uh, historical fables, the tortoise and the hare. It's a story of a race between the tortoise, a creature that's very slow moving, and the hare, a very a large rabbit, strong hind legs that moves very, very quickly. The hare, so they go to race each other. Who knows why, but they choose to do this. The hare is very confident in winning the race. So he's going around boasting about his his prowess and how quickly he can move and, and how dare the turtle, the tortoise even challenge him. At one pot point he stops during the race and he falls asleep. The tortoise, determined, quiet character, continues to move very slowly, is hunkered down, keeps on trucking, and finally wins the race, despite the speed and prowess of the hare. So the moral of the story is quite simple. You can move, you can be more successful by doing things slowly and steadily, then by acting quickly and with much gusto. So this fable was thought to be written in the 6th century BC, but the tension it calls out is timeless. Did anybody see the commercial in the Super Bowl? <laughs> right? Um, 
but it was also, this tension was apparent in President Obama's State of the Union address during his remarks about our approach to foreign policy. He noted that our tendency to want to react with blustery responses to global issues doesn't necessarily help us. He noted that too often we pursue efforts with fervor and quickly become tired or unmotivated, abandoning what we'd started and moving on to the next flash in the pan. But at the same time, if we move at a snail's place, pace, we may lose our audiences. There was a great article in um, the January uh, edition of Foreign, the Foreign Service Journal that discussed the American public's current outlook toward global engagement. It writes, Americans are far less interested in managing international relations through perpetual systemic engagement. They want to either avoid or fix problems, transcending the never-ending compromise of diplomacy which seemed to many both old world and old hat. So I know this tension is playing out in our field and it plays out in this room. And frankly, it plays out within me. I often, Kyle refers to me as the hare with running shoes on going nonstop constantly. But there is a tortoise in me as well. So I, I, I do feel that tension. There is this incredible drive for innovation and appetite to increase our ability to act very quickly at the same time, a recognition that we just need to hunker down and keep at the long-term sustained engagement. If I were to rewrite this story, I wouldn't necessarily do it as Mercedes-Benz did, but I would rewrite the story of the tortoise and the hare for our purposes. I would not pit the tortoise against the hare. I'd put them on the same team and use them strategically. During this conference and beyond, let's figure out how the two approaches can work together to exponentially increase our effectiveness. I believe that this is one of the biggest challenges that we face as a network. How do we strategically deploy the two different approaches? When do we use one approach without abandoning the other? If anyone can reconcile this apparent conundrum, it is this network and this public-private partnership. Not only do we have 3,000 years of collective experience, but we represent the largest and oldest public-private partnership, grassroots network of organizations in the world, mobilizing the largest number of individuals who engage the most influential people on this planet. I like to quote Winston Churchill, who once said, the price of greatness is responsibility. One of the goals of this meeting is to give us, everyone in this room, the chance to step forward, lead the discussion of the future of public diplomacy. Much of the literature on this subject of new diplomacy focuses on four key game changers. And you're gonna hear from, frankly, two of the leading experts who have been thinking and writing about this a lot, Ambassador Mark Grossman and Dr. Kristen Lord. They, they note four trends. The first one, we need a whole of government approach. All the different agencies that are working abroad need to be more cooperative and collaborative in how we're engaging with the rest of the world. The rise of non-state actors, we hear about this all the time, individuals playing a critical role in national and international affairs. The third is the integration of technology. And fourth, which is most important for us, is the need for government to work with civil society. That's where this network and this partnership come into play. We have for decades demonstrated how government can work effectively to advance foreign policy goals. It's time for us to step forward, share our challenges and our successes, and serve as a role model for others, whether it's foreign governments, universities, private sector entities, alumni organizations, and others. Last night I had a conversation with a, a, a woman in the Mexican embassy who was just, just amazed at what we've been able to build over these decades and wants to try and look to us as a, as a model for what they could do, build out in Mexico. We are a network of doers, running great programs over a long period of time. Show and tell is not necessarily our forte, although we are getting better at it. It isn't our nature to be out there boasting about our accomplishments like the, the hair I talked about. One could say that we tend to be more like the tortoise, but our environment is demanding we be more hair-like. It's our responsibility to step forward, to share our collective wisdom of how civil society can play a significant role in the new diplomacy and how to find this balance that we're, we're being called to find. I go back to Churchill's quote, with greatness comes responsibility. 
Over the course of the coming days, you have the opportunity to learn from some of the most impressive people, theorists and practitioners in the field of public diplomacy. At the same time, we want to give you a platform to shape the conversation. I put out a call in early December to the entire network to share your definition of exchange, and I frankly was astounded by the responses, and thank you for sharing those. We have a, a word cloud that um, we wanted to put up for you to, to reflect on. We'll be sharing them over the course of the meeting and over the next several months what you, what you wrote in, and it was really quite, quite astounding. We want you to share your definition of the new diplomacy. And in, the, in our nerd nook, you'll have the opportunity to put up a sign and write your definition, and we'll be uh, tweeting those out and Facebooking these out. As you go up to Capitol Hill this afternoon, we want you to take congressional selfies. We want to tell the rest of this nation that we are engaging and leading the narrative on this conversation. Over the course of 2015, we at Global Ties and our partners with the Department of State and all of you are taking some pretty big steps to lead and shape the conversation this year. Beginning with our Discover Diplomacy summits that we discussed earlier, it really bring, gives us the opportunity to bring more partners to the table and share the critical role that the domestic audience plays in having a say in how this nation conducts its foreign affairs. We'll be launching a social media campaign starting in early March to, to bring in more audiences and to help shape the, the narrative even further. We'll continue on in helping build the capacity of our alumni member organizations so that they can grow those seeds around the world. We'll continue to work on building out the Emerging Leaders Program and new, a new initiative of engaging higher education through the new Meet America program to encourage universities to take on a more proactive role in leveraging the massive public diplomacy opportunity of bringing and better integrating the 860,000 international students that are studying in this country every year. We want you to take ownership, bring your voices together, and lead during this meeting and beyond. With greatness comes responsibility. I want to thank you for being with us over the next couple of days. It is going to be a jam-packed day this afternoon, um, or today. We have five concurrent sessions following this meeting's plenary, starting at 10.15, so you have a little bit of time to find your way. I know it's a, it's a little confusing, and by Saturday, I know you'll be, you'll be telling the newcomers where to go. Our luncheon with the ambassadors will begin promptly at 12 o'clock. It'll be helpful for you to start making your way into this room a little after 11.30 so we can get our ambassadors situated because we have a, a pretty busy um, program where we will be uh, welcoming over 50 ambassadors in the diplomatic corps, the Under Secretary of State, Richard Stengel, and President Oscar Arias, uh, former two-time president of Costa Rica, Nobel Peace Prize, and IVLP alumnus. Following the luncheon, we'll kick off our Capitol Hill visits, which I have to just remind us all of how critically important this is. It is a very complicated time on Capitol Hill. The president just put out his budget calling for an increase in exchange programs um, to the ECA budget. However, a $2 million cut to the IVLP program. That's concerning. Now again, that's the president's budget. But we need to be out there talking about exchanges broadly, but also reminding, reminding Congress of the tortoise and the hare, that it, this is a long-term commitment. This program has demonstrated success over 75 years, and we can't go to the next flash in the pan. We need to commit to the long-term sustained engagement. And then tonight we'll be topping off our really amazing day with a reception that the Department of State will be hosting, and we're thrilled to have Dr. Jill Biden join us this evening. So thank you for being here. Let's have a, an amazing couple of days, and we will see you later. Thank you.